I'm Brandon Roberts, Public Information Director for the Pike County Government. I'm here with Dr. Greg Cabeto of Oral Surgery Faculty at the University of Kentucky. And, Doctor, uh, you said this is your third year here. Uh, what are your, um, what's your take on, on the remote area medical program in general, specifically here in Pike County? I think the program in general is just a, an incredible uh, blend of people interested in taking care of people that need it. Uh, we have an incredible volunteer spirit, I think, certainly among all the dental schools here in Kentucky, University of Louisville, University of Kentucky, uh, the faculty, uh, students have all given hours and hours of their time to come down here and basically serve people that need dental treatment that may not otherwise be able to afford it. What do you see uh, mostly going on down here? I know uh, there's, they offer, you offer cleanings, you offer extractions. Uh, is that basically the, uh, is that the bulk of the work, or, or do you see some more specialized stuff going on down there occasionally? Well, there are a number of people having uh, fillings done as well as cleanings. Um, no complicated fillings, but certainly uh, where a tooth can be restored in a reasonable period of time with a white or a silver kind of a filling, those things are done quite frequently here. I suspect that one of the largest demands is for dental extractions. A lot of people that have bad teeth that cannot be fixed uh, have taken advantage of this opportunity to come in and be treated by experienced people um, to take care of situations that otherwise might leave them with uh, certainly the risk of uh, infection and ongoing pain. How many um, students did you bring with you? We really have all resident staff. So we have oral surgery residents from the University of Kentucky. We have five uh, as well as uh, Myself uh, as faculty, uh, Dr. Chad Street is an oral surgeon who trained at our program a number of years ago, who lives here in Pikeville and is very instrumental in, in coordinating uh, our appearance here, along with uh, even the University of Louisville, is an oral surgeon and resident also from the University of Louisville. So uh, we've been very fortunate. We've had support from some equipment manufacturers to provide us some of the drills that we use to help take out teeth. Uh, I think we've had a, just a, a good turnout. We're real pleased. This is a, probably the biggest oral surgery support we've had in any of the ones that I've been through, too, in order to get uh, this many of our residents here with us at one time. We're here with Rick Branham, Homeless Education Coordinator for the Pike County Board of Education. Mr. Branham, you have an interesting story to tell, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, go ahead with it. Well, uh, you know, the Rama van, I was here volunteering back in uh, dental, and um, just saw what they was doing back there and realized that I had a homeless student um, that recently had um, had to have all of his teeth pulled and he had dentures made um, but he can't wear them and you know the young man's 18 year old you know 18 year old walking around with with no teeth you know the the dentures just don't fit right um, so um, I just inquired back there, and they was like, oh, yeah, you know, I, you know, go get him. And so he lives here local. Um, I went and picked him up, and, you know, we've got him down here today to try to get his dentures fixed so that he can, you know, wear his dentures and, and you know, and, and, and feel good about himself. I'm here with Morgan Hume, Ohio State University pre-optometry student. And, Morgan, this is, uh, you told me this is not your first year here. This is your second. What brings you back to RAM uh, again this year? Well, I had so much fun last year. Um, we saw over 400 patients in, I don't know, the 10 hours we were here. It's a great thing that they're doing, and um, I'm just happy to do it again. What uh, area of the optical are you working particularly? Today? Yes. Um, I'm working with the pre-testing and doing acuities. Elaborate a little bit on what acuity is. <laughs> Okay, acuities is where they stand at the line and they cover their right eye and we see what they can read on the chart and then they cover their left eye and we see what they can read on the chart just to see how well they're seeing with their glasses or without glasses. So the thing we've all done at the eye doctor before. Yes, absolutely. We're here with Nick Carr, another uh, pre-optometry student from Ohio State University. And uh, Nick, tell me a little bit about why you got into the uh, optometry program at Ohio State. Uh, well, Ohio State's known, like, they like, the best optometry school in the country, or so I've been told, that in California. So that's why I wanted to go to Ohio State, even though I'm a Michigan fan. So, uh, can't, <laughs> can't really say that out loud. But um, I was born with a blind eye, so you can see the size blind. And my whole life has been filled with vision and going to the eye doctor every year. So it's just, I've slowly been just introduced to the eye field, and it just, it seems so interesting because... You know, going to high school, what do you want to do? I don't know what I want to do the rest of my life. So interested in science and eyesight. So I chose to go in optometry. Well, being in and out of the eye doctor 
basically your whole life you kind of maybe had a leg up on a lot of people when you got there yeah just just a little bit i mean i've seen all the machines but i'm just learning how to use them uh, for the first time today so it's it's nice it's very fun interesting stuff is this your first ram yeah this is my first time here so i'm it's i'm like the new guy i'm like the only guy with 15 other girls so that's not a bad <laughs> that's what everyone tells me that's you uh is, you plan on uh, returning i take it yes yes i can't wait to come back here next year and uh go to free up time club at house state it really is a blast, and meeting all these people, is, it's awesome. I'm here with Tom Dandridge of Reach Across America, and uh, we're in the, I guess it's a uh, truck trailer, basically. Yep, this is a, it was, used to haul Le Mans series uh, race cars, and we've converted it from a race car trailer over to, it hauls all our dental stations, uh, 32 dental uh, stations up top that they take inside, and, and uh use for for dentists to, to do you know extractions fillings and and everything that dentists do and then once everything's out of here it's turned turns into an eye lab that we carry over 10,000 prescription lenses and uh, we can make once you get a uh, you get an eye exam and a, and a prescription and we can make you a complete set of glasses and in about an hour but if you if you're the first person okay if you're the last person it takes a little, a little bit longer. more than an hour yeah Okay, well basically what happens is uh, when you start out you get an eye exam inside and then you'll pick out a brand new set of frames uh, from, we have uh, thousands and thousands of frames inside and you'll, you can get anything because everything is donated to frames so you can have anything from, from uh, George frames to Armani frames and you never know what you're going to get because uh, you know like I said it's all donated and they're all brand new frames. Uh, once you come out here you, it comes out with your prescription in a tray with a number on it uh, and uh, basically what they'll do is they'll come here and, to one of these drawers and inside these drawers we'll have different different prescriptions. We have over 10,000 prescription lenses on here. And so basically what happens is, is they'll pull the prescription that, that matches up with your prescription that the doctor has written and the lens will start out like that. Uh, and when it's through it'll fit into this pair of glasses. Uh, depending on, uh, on your prescription uh, and whether it's a bifocal or non-bifocal uh, and you know that, that all is determined, determined by the prescription. Um, once they've pulled the lens, uh, it kind of works, the, it comes down here, you'll have a whole set of lenses pulled and we come to here and I didn't pull the lenses because I, I don't know how to pull the lenses. Um, she'll, if you want to wait, she'll grab them real quick. Well, you, once the lenses are pulled, they'll come down here, um, and then um, whether it's a right or a left lens, um, usually uh, you look at the prescription on here. These are basically uh, the, uh, identical, so it's not going to matter whether you um, um, which one you start with. But basically, you're going to pull the lens out, and uh, it's going to come out. You're going to put it in here in the machine. And I'm going to look on here, make sure what the axis is. Uh, and I'm going to line, just basically line everything up. And once I get a red cross, uh, my next thing is I'm going to get the axis, which is 180. And there. And then all I'm going to do is, is mark it. And it's going to put three dots. I don't know if you can see that or not, but those three dots are going to later be referenced and all, and then I'm basically just going to mark this as the right lens. And then I'm going to do this one the same way, but the axis on this is 86. And once they get the three dots on that, it'll move down this way, and we'll come to this machine over here. And we're just going to pop these, what they call dummy lenses out, get rid of those, and we're going to trace, next all we're going to do is trace the frame. And the little machine's got a little stylus in there, and it's going to get the, the shape of the frame, and, and uh, all the information it needs on uh, uh, 
how to line them, everything up. And once that's done, we'll take them out. And then we're going to come down to this machine. And this is what's called a, uh, a blocker. And basically, I'm just going to, it's going to gather all the information up that we just, uh, from the tracer. And it's going to pull all that information over. It's simple. And um, I'm going to look, make sure here where it says PD. My PD is 65.5. So, like that. make sure that the, the trace was correct and it brought everything down to the right uh, it brought the right frame over once I've done that then I'm going to get everything in here lined up there's going to start with a green block because green is right and envision everything starts with the right I don't know why but it does and basically we're just going to put this block on there because this block's going to hold uh, hold this lens in the machine so it can be cut and I'm going to go to the left red block on. <laughs> and saved all of that. Now once it's all saved, it's going to come down here. Everything's coming to this one particular machine, and uh, I'm going to do is scan, scan the barcode. Once I scan the barcode, then I'm just going to double check everything, make sure that the tra it pulled everything there, and that the, the shape of this matches the shape of the frame itself. Uh, I'm also going to look, make sure the PD is correct, so that the PD is just a pupil distance, so that you know that the that everything lines up so the person can see. And then I'm going to just put this in here. And, I'm going to, and you're more than welcome. This is just water. It's a cooling agent. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll leave the door open if you want to take a look and um, see what happens next. And basically just going to hit start. Everything works. I mean, everything matches up. And what it's going to do right now is it's going to measure the lens to make sure that it can make the cut. Once it uh, completes the measurement, and what it's doing is making sure it's not, that there's enough lens there to make the cut, make and the, for the shape of the of the frame, and it's just going to go down on these wheels. The water will start, and it'll go down on the wheels, and it'll start to shape the lens. Now it's going to put what's called a bevel on it. There's a groove that, that's inside your, on the edge of the glass, on the glass's frame, and it's going to put the bevel on it so it'll, it'll have a ridge on the lens that'll fit within this groove right here in the frame itself. Once it's got the, the bevel on it, now it's going to 
shape up the edges and uh, make sure that they're smooth and not going to cut you um, when they're inside the, the frame itself. done pull it out and this is the right lens for the right side and it'll fit right in there and these being plastic most of the time well this is a tough plastic so I'm not going to get them to pop in I'm going to have to heat it up but um, once that's done you just do the same thing with the with the left you just pop it back in and get it in there change it to the left side and you just hit start again and, and that's the birth of the glasses that's how it, and it goes from there it starts there and then once it once that's complete they basically leave from there they come over here and uh, there'll be somebody here that assembles them once they get assembled then they'll they'll lay them here there'll be a final check uh, the final check makes sure that everything matches up just kind of quality control and then uh, they'll set them here and somebody from inside will come out and uh, bring them inside. They'll take them in and there's an optician in there that will fit the, fit the glasses to them so that they make sure they stay on their head and don't fall in the toilet when they bend over and things like that, you know. <laughs> so, and that, that's how it's done. We're here with Ron Brewer, Director of Remote Area Medical. Mr. Brewer, um, tell us a little bit about Pike County's, uh, this is our fifth annual. How, how's it going so far? It, it's went real good. This is our fifth annual plenty of in Pike, uh, Pike Full, Pike County. Uh, this morning we uh, opened the gates about uh, 6 o'clock for the patients to come in. Uh, yesterday afternoon when we got here about 11 o'clock we, uh, we had people waiting in line to get in. So with opening the uh, door brought the people in for vision, general health and uh, dental. We've uh, brought in about 463 people this morning. We talked to someone earlier who was uh, mentioned about the uh, denture realignment which is something that uh, a couple of people were unaware that was done here, but um, he got some dentures realigned for like an 18-year-old uh, yeah. who had. And uh, so, uh, if you could real quickly tell us about the uh, the more specialized uh, things that are offered here at Ram. That that was something, and we've had it a couple of years uh, realigning the dentures or repairing the uh, partials. Mm -hmm. I do remember the young gentleman that came in this morning and uh, had his uh, dentures realigned and. Uh, adjusted for him, but yes, that is a, a program that we have uh, added to the uh, RAM services, and uh, to me, it's one that really is a needed uh, uh, resource. And also, I'd like to see it come about that one day that we'll be able to make dentures to replace a lot of the extractions that are. Well, uh, we just went through the, the trailer where they make the eyeglasses, and uh, that's a really uh, an amazing thing to see if you've never seen it. It's really just. Well, eight minutes from from beginning to end. Once once they get it uh, cut, what um, you know? And, and last year we saw a surge in the optical. Are you seeing about the same thing this year? Or, I mean, I know dental's the main draw, but uh, the optical's getting really close up there, isn't it? Dental dental has uh, been a uh, draw for the last uh, couple of years, but today, uh, as the uh, papers came in, uh, we have more in the uh, vision side, and as you can see, that we are uh, working down the. Uh, uh, dental, but uh, the vision line is still a little long back there. But uh, I would say by end's the uh, day that uh, vision will outdo the uh, dental part. And it is, I think we have one of the most uh, high tech uh, clinics uh, in the uh, dental uh, vision side than uh, across the whole system. We can, we can grind those glasses out, uh, brand new pair, in an hour and a half. They will have their glasses and walking out of the uh, clinic. Well, Mr. Brewer, every time we see you, you're running almost full speed through here. We'll let you get back to work. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you. Appreciate you. We're here with Carol Napier, event coordinator for Remote Area Medical. Carol, um, fifth year in a row, um, same basic uh, stuff going on here. Um, this is very important to you, isn't it? Yeah, it's very dear to my heart because, you know, I get the satisfaction of knowing that we're helping so many people that would otherwise not have been able to afford the services that we provide. You know, and, and as we stand here, I was, it's something I was thinking about earlier. Um, what's going on here right now is really a remarkable thing, isn't it? It is a remarkable thing. You know, the beautiful part of it, in my opinion, is the volunteers. That's what it's all about, these individuals that are willing to give other time to come back, you know, to gather together to help those that are in need. And I just think that's wonderful. That's what life's all about is helping others. Well, I was mentioning to the judge, it's, 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 not, it's not just the volunteers in the medical field. It's, it's, uh, it's me 
you, um, you know, Bobby Branham out there registering patients. It's uh, from top to bottom. It couldn't be done without everybody, and that's why I think what makes this uh, so special to me at least. Yeah, it definitely is a team effort. I've always said that from day one. It's because every person is important to the process. You know, from those that serve the food to those that maintain the restroom, it just takes a team effort. And, you know, like I said earlier, that's what's so beautiful about this whole ordeal is those that are willing to give up their time to help others to come together, you know, in that team effort. You know, we're spending Saturday, Sunday on a week when we would normally be off. Mm -hmm. It's pretty weather outside. And uh, nobody's complaining about being in here. Uh, this is uh, this is just a wonderful thing. Well, Brandon, you know the thing about volunteering, you know, that I find is the satisfaction of knowing that you've been in a position to help someone else. And I, I don't think you can put any about you know amount of money, value money on that. It's the satisfaction of you getting when you're confronted with a person that's received the help and them saying thank you, you know. And to me, that that's what's what it's all about you know judge mentions the uh, often mentions the gentleman last year who had the blood mm -hmm. pouring out of his mouth mm -hmm. the galls mm -hmm. and uh, said he had be felt better right then than he had in the past 25 years mm -hmm. and he couldn't have done it if it weren't for ram and i think and i think you'll agree that's 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 what we're looking for here isn't it yeah it is what we're looking here and in fact i had an incident of a lady that had came last year for glasses and she had messaged me on facebook and told me uh, that she hadn't been able to afford glasses. And she was able to come last year to the clinic. And as a result of the services we provided, she was able to, you know, to have the eye exam to get the glasses. And one thing, she sent me a message to thank us for what we were doing because she said that what she does at night is the last thing she reads the Bible. And she says, and then she pulls off her glasses and she thanks God that she was able to be able to come to the clinic last year, was able to receive those services and be able to see. You know, I, th I don't think people realize this, that there are a lot of people out here that are in need, and those people really struggle because they're not able to afford those services. And, you know, as I said, that's what's so great about this event is that those volunteers are willing to come and help those individuals like that are in need that would otherwise not have been able to afford the services. Well, we mentioned in the uh, the other PAC TV show we did, the sit-down show, mm -hmm. about... Uh, you know, people, I don't want anyone to have in their mind that this is like a, an assembly line type thing that they just basic stuff, get them in and get them out. This is this is as thorough as an exam you'd get at the eye doctor, at the dentist office, um, at the uh, diabetes testing clinic, anywhere. Um, this is, I mean, this is the real deal. Isn't it? Yeah. Well, in fact, the lady that had messaged me about the eyeglasses, that's one of the comments that she'd made. She said it was one of the most thorough eye exams that she had ever had. So, it, it, like you said, Brandon, it isn't one of those deals where they, you know, shove you through. They do spend time with you, you know, and, and it's good quality services. I mean, the services are offered here, I think, of the, you know, one of the better quality services that you'll ever receive. Well, if anybody's uh, here, they can go to the optical section and see the line of people waiting, and they'll know that it's not mm -hmm. a uh, rush them through yeah. type of deal. Yeah, that's for sure. See, the optical and dental, you know, are t the two main components. That, that's the two things that we see the people need most is the, is the dental and vision. Uh, but definitely they don't rush them through. They spend time with them to make sure that, you know, the eye exams are thorough. And same thing true in the dental. You know, they do a... Uh, do an assessment, they determine what's needed, and then they, they follow through with it. So. We're here with Heath Wiley at the 5th uh, Annual RAM uh, at Pike Central High School. Uh, so much of what we do here, uh, donations and volunteers are basically everything. The uh, Rotary was nice enough this year to supply the food. Um, what um, spawned the Rotary's interest in doing this this year? Uh, we just feel like it's really, really necessary for the community. Uh, we do a lot with the community as far as eyeglasses, uh, dentist work, helping kids, helping families that need the help. You know, we just we volunteer as much as possible to help the community. Do you see uh, Rotary uh, continuing to do this year after year? Maybe getting more involved with I don't know what else you could do really, as far as just volunteer. But do is this something you think you, it might become a yearly thing with the Rotary? I think so. I mean, we're really committed to doing something like this every year if we need to. Uh, we want to because. Uh, this is just a, the tip of the iceberg, you know, with the food. I mean, there's a lot of other things we could do, awareness. Um, we've got a lot of uh, business leaders that could help get the word out and help uh, spawn more interest and get folks through the door and make this one of the biggest events 
uh, in Eastern Kentucky. So we're excited to be a part of it. You know, there's there's a lot we could do, and we do we are committed to doing it. I'm here with Pike County Judge Executive Wayne T. Rutherford. Judge, I was talking to Dr. Cabeto earlier from University of Kentucky, and I explained to him how Ram got here. You want to elaborate on that a little bit? I know that you uh, were pretty much instrumental in getting this here. Well, it's been about six years ago or a little longer that I was at Wise, Virginia, and at the Huddle House, had breakfast, came out. There were signs at intersections that said, free medical. I followed those signs to an airport, and I saw something that was awesome to me, and it was uh, it was people getting relief from toothaches that uh, that had toothaches some for a year or two and couldn't afford uh, dental attention. And uh, so then I, I decided to come back into public office, and 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 a hard Carl Napier I told Carl when I talked to her the first time, that Carl, the first day we go in office, I want you to go to Wise and find the lady who, of course, uh, uh, coordinates uh, theirs. And so so Carl went over there, and this is the fifth year that we've had uh, had them here. It is a sponsor by Pike County, and we have plenty of other sponsors that helps us and assist us, assist us in this. But this is God sent for people who cannot afford, who are, who can af not afford medical, and that is dental, eye, uh, diabetes, uh, cholesterol, and and uh, women's health, men's health, and it is preventive preventive medicine is what goes on here a, a lot uh, at, at Ram each year. But but uh, this year it's uh, again we observe people uh, coming in who are underinsured. And most people, if their insurance does not cover dental a whole lot, and uh, neither does it cover uh, the, the, the teeth. And so, what an opportunity this is for people, and 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 that's that's what government ought to be about, and it's what RAM is about. And uh, the RAM's mission is to serve these people and in Central Appalachia and. Pike County, we're, we're just glad that we're able to bring this into this particular area of our country and provide this service to our people. Well, Judge, as, as I was walking in this morning, I saw, uh, I saw Doug Tackett out there. I saw Bobby Branham, all these government. The volunteers and the sponsors are as important as the, as the doctors and the, uh, the specialists that we get here. I mean, it couldn't happen without... Couldn't happen All of them without the county government employees now and and the community volunteers you look at all of these shirts around as, as you're here today and but it just would, would not happen it could not happen and and uh, the county employees uh, the administrative employees especially they they come out and uh, and assist and help and make this thing happen things don't happen Brandon as you know you have to make them happen and uh, we, we certainly appreciate uh, we certainly certainly appreciate those people with Ram uh, Carl Napier does a magnificent job bringing everybody together bringing all the county employees all the community volunteers and then to have all these 80 some dentists and all of these optometrists and ophthalmologists and the other medical doctor to have the University of Pikeville involved in it and all of these different ones, Highlands and the local hospitals here. But uh, it's everybody working together and providing this service to our people. Judge, something I found interesting is most people we interview or even the people that we just talked to, this is their second, their third, their fifth. They've been here every year. I mean, they come back. This is kind of they love it. This is something they, they feel is, is necessary and they want to be a part of it. Yeah, the, certainly. And Brandon, uh, I just took a fellow back full of gold from over West Virginia. And uh, then we've had people from Virginia here today, too. And they have a ram over at Wyatt, and they had one at Grundy. But then when they have one here, if they didn't get what they needed, their medical need, then, of course, they came on over here for this one. But but yes, you're, you're exactly right. It's that they, this is, some people just cannot afford it and they, they don't go get, and 
and the preventive medicine is something that certainly that this country needs to, America needs to do to bring the health care costs down. Well, Judge, I know you're busy. We'll let you get back to work. Thanks for speaking with us.